Over the next few minutes, what I'm hoping to do is show you around the Queensland Family History Society website, and I hope to surprise you and encourage you, obviously, to become a member if you, if you would consider doing so, but also to encourage you to visit the site as often as possible, even if you're not a member, because we have some fantastic resources on there, which I think would help everyone no matter where you live. As we frequently say, it's not just Queensland resources that we have. So come on, let's go and have a look at our website and see what it's got. You can see up the top here that we're not logged in. If you are a member, you might choose to log in at this point and save yourself a bit of trouble later. Otherwise, as you start to access restricted or member only material, you'll be prompted by the system to log in. So what I recommend you have a look at first as a non-member is go to the online access tab and we're looking for the global keyword search. And here it is, global keyword search. Just underneath it, you'll see data sets by category. And I think that's really important to look at first, just so that you get a sense of how many records there are across these data sets all the different subject areas and the breadth and depth of coverage in the records that we have online. So here we are at the top of the list of all the data sets and I thought what I might do is just highlight a few of them with you so that you just start to get a sense of the fact that this really is a window to the world. These aren't just data sets about Queensland. Yes, by and large they are, but anyway, Let's have a talk about this first one, the George Bond photographic collection. Who was George Bond? Well, he was actually a monumental mason and he collected um, lots of photographs from both um, Queensland, but people started to send him photos of cemetery headstones from interstate and overseas. And the collection started to get a little bit out of hand, basically. And so he brought the collection to us in 1996 and said that we could have it as long as we preserved it and made it accessible to everybody. So we hope we've fulfilled those requirements. And indeed, this collection comprises photographs of thousands of cemetery headstones, predominantly from Queensland, but you should know that there are many from New South Wales, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria and Western Australian cemeteries as well. What you'll notice as you scroll down this list of data sets is that some of them have a green asterisk beside them. And that means that anyone can access the content in these data sets. You don't have to be a member of the Queensland Family History Society to do so. So let's have a look at the Queensland Women's Suffrage Petitions. Using global keyword search, I've searched for some ancestors of my husband's. So you can see I've found two doors in the Queensland Women's Suffrage Petitions data set, one Alice and the other Edward. Now you may very well think uh, surely Edward wasn't a woman and you'd be right. So um, in fact in 1894 two suffrage petitions were presented to the Parliament in Queensland, a women's one with 7,781 signatures and also a men's suffrage petition, which had 3,575 signatures. And then a little bit later in 1897, there was what's called the WCTU suffrage petition, which was the Women's Christian Temperance Union. And so let's see what happens when we actually click on the image over here on the right. Isn't that special? Can you see the signatures of Edward Dorr of Tingalpa and Alice Sophia Dorr from memory, also of Tingalpa, husband and wife. So in each case, these signatures were collected at mass meetings. 
and by walking along streets. And though not all parts of the state were covered, there are signatures from some areas far distant from Brisbane, including Atherton, Herberton, Cloncurry, Charters Towers, Rockhampton and Gundawindi, to name just a few. In 2009, John McCulloch located these petitions which had been lost. They were digitised by the Queensland State Archives to preserve them as important historic documents and have now been transcribed by our own society and made available to everyone. Here's another set of records, the Army Index from 1787. Do you know if your ancestor was an officer in the British Army? Of course, the British Army served all over the world, not just England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, but America, um, places like Barbados and Jamaica, Nova Scotia, Quebec, Africa, the East Indies. This Army Index was published by the War Office in 1787 and includes 9,516 names that are indexed, including 4,200 officers on half pay. So that's well worth searching, no matter where you live. The last series of records is probably well known to many of you here, but just in case you don't know about the Emigrants from Hamburg list, um, this database provides a searchable index to all the available departure lists for ships from Hamburg to ports not only in Australia but to New Zealand during that particular period. And it records the name and the former place of residence, age, occupation, ship, destination and the departure year for more than 40,000 emigrants. It's an important resource for family historians and those with a more general interest in migration from countries like Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, Italy and other European countries. And again I say to you this isn't restricted just to Queensland, this is people who emigrated to Australia and New Zealand. So do have a look at this list of records and um, don't cast it aside because you think it's only Queensland focused. So let's scroll back up to the top of those data sets and come over here to the left hand side of the page and click on global keyword search. Now before you start gaily entering in names of your ancestors, I would recommend that you click on this button here saying about global keyword searching because that provides you some tips and tricks to making the most of your search. And just as an example, I've put in an ancestor of my husband's, Thomas Dore, and we're going to see what sorts of records come up when we put in this search term. Great, we've got quite a few results here. Anything from cattle brands through to electoral rolls. What happens if we click on one of the data sets? Drat and Dar Nation. It's at this point that you're invited to log in to the restricted access or member only content. But at least as a non member, you know that there are potentially some records there. And if you wanted to pursue the matter further, give the society a call, talk to one of our lovely volunteers in the library, and see if perhaps they can do a quick look up for you. So what else can you access as a non-member on our website? Well, I'm delighted to inform you that you can search our library's catalogue on the website. You can access that by clicking on our resources tab and then scroll over here to the left. Can you see where it says catalogue search? Click on that. That will take you through to this page and just click on the library catalogue button again here. This will open a new window for our V library catalogue. And you can search by title, author, subjects. Keep in mind this is a marvellous tool for you to plan a research trip from home so that when you come to the library you're ready 
to search our print library or indeed any of our other resources. Keep in mind that this catalogue covers our whole library. So it will bring up all sorts of results from computer resources to maps to books and so on. If you're a member of Queensland Family History Society, there is the option, as you can see, to set up lists um, to save and so on. The other thing you can access on our website as a non-member is snippets. Just down here at the bottom left, snippets is our e-newsletter, which gets sent out once a month. So let's have a look at what that offers. All you need to do is click on the latest issue that you might be interested in. So for 2021, there we are. That's the issue from January. And I hasten to add again, this is not just Queensland material, but of course of interest to Australians and indeed those researching overseas. It's basically all the bits and pieces that we can find out of interest to family historians. Last but not least, if you're new to family history, we've also set up a page of useful web links for those of you still navigating your way around the big old world wide web and trying to find all sorts of things. So if you just click on that, you'll find links to all the registry offices around Australia and also other resources like state and national archives. We've also provided some links to websites of international significance that we think you'll need in your journey with this obsessive hobby. We really hope that this has whetted your appetite for more and if you decide you'd like to access the member-only material, we would really be delighted if you joined us. To do so, just click on the tab, Join Us, and you can join online. Keep in mind the Society is run by volunteers, and setting up access to the databases won't be instant. It might take a few days. But of course, if you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us to follow up. So let's have a look now at the difference in access for members of Queensland Family History Society. Perhaps the greatest drawcard for new members, or those considering membership of Queensland Family History Society, is the access that you can have to all the subscription databases you could dream of. Ancestry, Find My Past, The Genealogist, My Heritage, and Irish Ancestors. It really is a window to the world. Another reason many people join the Society is to access all our workshops and courses at a discounted price. And these, uh, in the current climate, we are delivering via Zoom. And indeed, I want to add at this point uh, that our members' meetings are open to everyone, members and non-members included, again delivered by Zoom. Hopefully in the future we'll also, when things improve, be able to deliver these in a more hybrid situation. So those of us who want to stay at home in the evenings can still participate. Um, but for all of us, at some stage, we lead quite busy lives with lots of commitments. And it can be frustrating that we miss out on a particular workshop because of other commitments. For those speakers that have let us, we have been able to put their PowerPoint presentations, for example, up on our website here. So having clicked on Learning and Presentations, you're presented with this menu. If you then click through to QFHS presentations, you'll come through to this page and you can see there's a wide variety of topics covered, um, anywhere from presentations from people at the National Archives, 
through to presentations from our own society members, uh, including Charlotte's very popular presentation on Italian ancestors. So if you missed out on that particular workshop last year, you can at least read Charlotte's PowerPoint presentation if you're a member of Queensland Family History Society. My personal favourite as a librarian is the access to the news and journals that you can find through the online access tab. If you click on that, you'll come through to this page. And you can see here we've got snippets that we spoke about before. Also the Society's award-winning journal, the Queensland Family Historian. Um, but the real treasure is this, talk about window to a world. Click on subscription journals and see what you'll find. As a family history society, QFHS receives journals from all over the world, from other family history societies. And if you're interested, we'll send you an email probably once a fortnight or so just to let you know which journals have come in. So for example, if we click on any of these, this gives you an example that just for one particular week, we've received about a dozen journals, anywhere from Lancashire and London, right through to Caloundra, Wales, and so on. Well, that just about brings us to the end of this presentation. And I hope that it's given you just a taste of what our website has to offer you as a non-member and of course so much more as a member of the society.